and I'll do that now. And what we're going to do is we're going to give the lambda calculus an operational semantics, and it's a small step semantics. We call it a reduction semantics. The reductions are of the form that an expression e reduces to another expression e prime. And we can think of this as a single computation step. Um, there are very few uh, transition rules, or as we call them here, reduction rules, in our semantics. The only uh, central rule is that of beta reduction. And the beta rule uh, describes how we evaluate an application when uh, E1 in the application is an abstraction. Uh, so if we have an abstraction, lambda x E1, and then we apply this to E2, what happens is that we substitute x by E2, we substitute x by E2 within the body E. So that's what happens. We, inside the body E1, we replace x by E2. Now this is parameter passing as we as we know it. If we think of this as a function call, we call this function with this actual parameter, and the actual parameter substitutes for x inside uh, the body of the function. Uh, and that is really just call by name. A sub-expression for which a reduction is possible we'll call a redex. And if the, sub, the reduction that can happen is a beta reduction, we'll call it a beta redex. Every now and then I'll use the word redex, and so now you know what it means. There are two other reduction rules, and they're the ones that tell us that if we have a sub-expression, then reduction can happen within the sub-expression, but only if uh, the expression that we're looking at is an application. If we have E1, E2, and E1 can reduce to E1 prime, then this expression can reduce to E1 prime, E2, and similarly if E2 in the application can reduce to E2 prime, then E1, E2 can reduce to E1, E2 prime. Um, so this means that we can reduce in a subterm of an application, but we cannot, in fact, underneath an abstraction, because there are no rules for that. Here's a a tiny example of, an, of a reduction to show you what's going on. So um, here is lambda x, lambda x, y, x, lambda y, y, lambda z, and this is a redex. We can see that we can, we can use the beta rule here, and since we can, by the other two rules, we can reduce in any part of an application, and remember this is an application, this is E1, and this is E2. Then we can reduce in here. We use the beta rule here, and we get that. We substituted this y by this term, and this is what we got. And ah, we have a beta redex again. And we can reduce that to this. And again, we have a beta redex. Here's a beta redex. We substitute again. And now we cannot continue any further because we cannot uh, reduce underneath an abstraction. So that's as far as we get here. Now, here's another example of a reduction. And this shows us why we need to be very careful when we define substitution. Um, here we have a beta redex, here's an abstraction, and here's something that we can apply the abstraction to. If we were just naive when we substituted, we would substitute this for that y, and we would get this. But there is a problem here, because now we're confusing that x here, this x is free, with that x in here. So this would now be captured by that, and that's a mistake. What do we do? We, of course, rename the bound variable. We perform an alpha conversion. This x here, now we call that z instead. And 
this then becomes that if we replace x by z. We replace that x by z. And then everything goes fine. We can perform the beta reduction and we get lambda z, z, lambda y, dot y, x. And there's nothing more we can do now. So that's very simple. Um, and you're, of course, wondering now, what's this all got to do with Haskell? Well, Haskell uh, is much richer than the simple, simple lambda calculus that we've just seen. But there is a simple way of, of dealing with that. What we simply do is we introduce a set of library functions or constants, as we call them. So we, if we do that, then the formation rules of our lambda calculus are amended a little bit. We have, as, as an, an, an additional feature, we have the constants that belong to the set lambda con. And that's really all we need. Haskell is simply a version of the lambda calculus with a very large set of constants. A functional programming language like Haskell or, or Scheme or what have you is really just an applied lambda calculus with a large set of constants. In our semantics of the applied lambda calculus, we simply add one or more reduction uh, actions for each constant which we introduce. Suppose we want to have natural number constants and the addition function, then we would say that the set of constants would be the set of natural numbers and the function symbol plus, and then we just add the action that if we take plus, apply it to n1, and then apply it to n2, then we get n, where n is the natural number that is the sum of n1 plus n2. And um, therefore we can simply see Haskell as a very elaborate syntactic sugar for a very particular applied lambda calculus. That's really all there is to Haskell. Um, in Haskell, we can actually see that we have the lambda calculus inside. We can directly see application because we use the same syntax for application as we do in the lambda calculus. We have lambda expressions as well. We have lambda abstractions, uh, lambda x uh, dot e, and we can write them as backslash x arrow e. Um, so we have the lambda calculus within Haskell. So this also means that um, just as in scheme we have uh, anonymous functions. In Scheme we would write lambda x e. In Haskell we write this instead.
And that's just call by name. So that's what beta reduction really is. It's the parameter mechanism call by name. Syntactic substitution of the actual parameter for the formal parameter. There are two more reduction rules. One says that if we have an application and uh, the first part of the application reduces the whole part, the whole application reduces, and the other one says that if we have an application, the second part of the application reduces, well, so does the entire uh, application. So we can perform reduction in any subterm of an application, but there's no rule that says that we can reduce underneath an abstraction. There are no rules for that, so we cannot reduce underneath an abstraction. And those are the only reduction rules we have, beta reduction plus the two rules on this uh, slide. Let's have an example to see what's going on. Here's a lambda expression, lambda x dot lambda x dot y x uh, and lambda y dot y dot, sorry, lambda z dot z. And uh, let's try to reduce that. Uh, the, the brackets show that uh, we can reduce here. This is uh, an application. We can use beta reduction. And we get that. We have uh, replaced y by lambda set dot set. So we got that. And we can reduce that again using beta reduction. And that's what we get. And now we can use beta reduction on the term here. What do we get? We get lambda x, lambda set dot set x. And since we don't have reduction, under an abstraction, we can do no more. We have terminated. Here's another example reduction that shows uh, the need for being very careful when it comes to renaming bound variables. The need for alpha substitution, oh sorry, alpha equivalents. Here is lambda y dot lambda x dot lambda x y applied to lambda y y x. Let's naively substitute lambda y dot y x for y over here and then we get lambda x x lambda y dot y x and the problem is that there is a free x in one part of the expression and a bound x in another part of the expression and we get a name clash the two x's are confused what do we do about that ah we rename 1x, we'll call it z instead. So instead of lambda x dot xy, we'll call it lambda z dot zy. And if we do that, we can substitute quite nicely. So um, that's another example of reduction. What's this all got to do with Haskell, you might ask? Well, it's got a lot to do with Haskell. Uh, Haskell is just the lambda calculus, but the simple lambda calculus is inconvenient. It's much smaller than uh, any actual programming language. It's not a programming language. It's a programming model, but if we want a programming language, we need more features. The way to achieve that is to introduce a set of constants that we can think of as library functions, and then the formation rules for the abstract syntax will be extended with an expression also being a constant c. And then um, a functional programming language is just an applied lambda calculus with a very large library of constants. That's all. To get the semantics of the applied lambda calculus, we just add some reduction axioms for each constant. Suppose we want to say the natural numbers and addition, then the lambda constants would be a constant for each natural number and a constant called plus, and then we would have an axiom plus saying that plus is n1 and n2 reduces to n, where n is n1 plus n2. So that's all. Um, Haskell is just, in some sense, it's just syntactic, syntactic sugar for a very particular applied lambda calculus. Um, and you can see that the lambda calculus is actually the heart of Haskell because we have lambda expression in, ha in Haskell. Lambda expressions, lambda x dot e, they're written as backslash x, arrow e, 
and x is the argument and e is the body of the lambda expression. So it's all in there. Uh, in scheme, we would write this as lambda x e. It's the same thing.